Hello and welcome to July's solar generation update. July is typically a month of sunshine and sunflowers, but in 2025 I feel it's been a month of two very distinct halves. Before we get into the numbers, here's an overview of my system. I have panels across all the orientations, including both the house and the garage. Let's start off with a south facing 12 panel array consisting of 430 watt SunPower Maxion 3 panels, paired with a 5 kilowatt solar edge inverter. On the east and west aspects, I have 10 REA Fusion 2 440 watt panels with N phase IQ8 HC microinverters. There's five of those on the east and five on the west. My most recent addition has another 10 panels in total, four south facing on the garage, four north facing also on the garage, and another two facing north on the front of the house. For storage, we have two second generation Tesla Powerwalls, each with 13.5 kilowatt hours of usable capacity, meaning 27 in total. Together, they have continuous output of just over 10 kilowatts. When I said it's been a month of two halves, this graph shows exactly what I mean. In the first half of the month, we had five days above 30 kilowatt hours, and another one at 29.9 on the second of the month. It's an excellent start with only two days of poor generation under the 15 mark. In the second half of the month, however, we had just two days above 30 kilowatt hours. Such was the change in the weather pattern. This gives us a total for the month of 684, and that equates to a daily average of 22.1 kilowatt hours from this array. The east and west aspects contributed 487.1 kilowatt hours in total. Apart from one west facing panel, there was actually a lot of parity when comparing east and west. This is rarely the case for our house because we have an azimuth of 195 on the south side, which means it does tend to favour the east side over the west quite heavily. The daily average for this system was 15.7 kilowatt hours. Finally, the garage and north aspects contributed 490.5 kilowatt hours in total. This equates to an average of 15.8 per day. While the south facing panels outperform the north as you would expect, the difference might not be as large as you would expect. The longer daylight hours and the high sun means north facing panels can still be highly productive at this time of year, which is what we're seeing here. On to proportion, and as expected, the 12 panel south facing system has the largest slice at 41%, but as in June, it's incredible just how close the east and west aspects are to the garage and north sides, with only 3.5 kilowatt hours between the two of them. Both systems consist of 10 panels, uh, but completely different orientations. So that's going to be really interesting to see how that progresses over the rest of the year. Which do you think will perform better? If you could have one of those two systems, which would it be? Here is a brand new graph I created to showcase how each individual panel's output compared to its rated kilowatt peak. I used the monthly generation of each panel and divided it by its rating. For example, one panel had a generation of 58.6 kilowatt hours, so I divided that by 0.45 due to its 450 watt rating. This gives a value of 130 kilowatt hours of energy for the month of July uh, per kilowatt of rated output from that panel. So I hope that makes sense. The x-axis along the bottom represents each panel across the orientation. The number along the y-axis on the left represents the result. This will be higher in brighter conditions. It will also be reduced in less effective orientations or when shading comes into play, which is what we're seeing there on one of the uh, west facing panels in purple because it's near the chimney. It makes it about as useful as one of the north facing panels, which in July is slightly unfortunate. This graph shows an average across each orientation of what we've just seen. Some observations I would make from this are, south garage is very close to south roof, which is a comfort given its reduced height. Many west facing panels outperform their east facing counterparts due to late afternoon and early evening sunshine. But that one shaded panel brings the west's average down quite significantly. And finally, the north garage is beating the north house panels despite being shaded at times by the house. This represents the difference between a 30 degree pitch and a 40 degree pitch on north facing panels. It's quite substantial, so it'll be interesting to see how things develop across the year. Let me know if you find these new graphs interesting or useful, or maybe you have some other ideas of data I can show. I'm always looking to improve these videos, so let me know if you think of something. As ever, be sure to like this video if you're enjoying it. Let's get back to the data. The highest generating day for the south facing system was achieved on the 12th of July, 
which resulted in 35.6 kilowatt hours of generation. It was very, very hot that day, well over 30 degrees, and the peaks really suffered with the maximum power output only being around 4.3 kilowatts. The highest generation day for the east and west aspects also occurred on the 12th of July. The total was 25.45, with all east-facing panels individually contributing 2.7, and west-facing averaging around 2.3 to 2.4. 12th of July also resulted in the highest generation from the garage and north facing aspects. Here the total was 24.76 kilowatt hours. Notably that day, all the south facing panels individually produced easily in excess of 3 kilowatt hours for the day. The 22nd of July was the darkest, cloudiest day we had all month, with a total across all systems uh, reaching around about 24 kilowatt hours. This was made up of around 9 from the south just over 7 from the east and west, and close to 8 from the garage and north side. The distribution of energy produced across the panels was largely even. With a total of 684, we just about met our PV watts targets. It was very, very close, uh, but the afternoon of sunshine on that final day just about clinched it for us. It was enough to keep our 2025 run of only missing one target so far, and that was February. The graph shows this is a long way short of the previous three months, but nevertheless, it's about where you would expect. For the east and west aspects, we overachieved the targets by a modest margin, being 23 up on those PV watts targets. Again, we were considerably short on May and June, but we did actually beat April's total, such is the difference between daylight hours between the months of April and July. Finally, the garage and north aspects continued to outperform targets, but again, by a small margin of only 27.5 kilowatt hours. We don't have any data prior to May to compare it to, as this is a new system, but it does continue to represent a strong start for these aspects. The graph shows a large drop in the expected uh, for August, and going forward, as the sun begins to get lower, it's likely we won't beat June's highs in 2025, but it should be interesting to see how things go. Despite the mixed weather, across all systems we still achieved over 1,600 kilowatt hours of usable energy this month, which is a good quantity. But going forward, I'm wondering if we will see a return to the weather we had prior to the midpoint of July, or if we're very much on the downward trend for the rest of the year. Let me know what you think in the comments. We have imported around 382 kilowatt hours of energy and exported just over 1,300. That makes our net grid usage 925 exported. And normally I would have a graphic of um, savings calculated by the Powerwall, but strangely this uh, graph is missing uh, this month, despite all the data being intact and the tariff prices uh, haven't changed. Um, so I don't know what's going on there, but I uh, did some quick calculations and estimate it's a saving between 280 and 290 pounds. Finally, onto our estimated bill, we managed to keep the peak import to just over a pound, uh, off peak import just over 32 pounds, and of course, standing charge of a 31 uh, day month around about 16 pounds. Uh, our export would give us around about 196 pounds, which would make our total bill credit uh, for the month of July around about 146 pounds and 77 pence which is uh, a little bit down from uh, last month, but uh, still a decent return. If you are interested in getting solar, I have some referral links in the description for Heatable, who fitted my east and west system along with my garage and north facing panels. If you're looking to join Octopus Energy, they have a variety of smart tariffs, which uh, I benefit from. Uh, again, check the description. Uh, other than that, that's it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.